Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video designed for those of you that have been asking for me to show the process to get something like this on the screen into a physical 3D printed part and to show all the steps. Now I already have a 3D printing for radio control series that goes through what an STL file is, what G-code is, how they all relate to each other. So if you haven't already watched those videos, go and have a look at those. In this video, what I'm going to do is show the individual steps that I'm going to go to to go from this thing that I've designed to the other side where I actually pick it out of the 3D printer. Now, for those of you that are 3D printing aficionados, you know what you're doing. This isn't going to be interesting to you at all. But if you are thinking of getting into 3D printing, or you just actually want to see somebody explain the steps, then this is for you. So thank you to everybody that asked in the last couple of videos that I've done showing how I design parts in applications like SketchUp to show the process. It's actually a really good idea. So this one is for you. So here's the part that I've actually designed. This is a little tool that goes in the side of Fat Shark goggles and it's used to eject the SD card. The SD card in Fat Shark goggles can be notoriously tricky to get out and this is a little thing that allows you to pop it out without too much trouble at all. So the first thing we're going to have to do is make sure that this model is as good as we can get it. Then we're going to have to export it in something called an STL file. And then finally, we're going to have to load that STL file into a slicer. So things like Cura and uh, Slicer with a three in the title of things you've probably heard of. And that's the thing that's going to take the model and create the G code that the printer's going to run. But before we get too far down that road, I just can see we've got some problems in this model. Now, a couple of people commented about how when they use SketchUp, it always goes wrong. And I've managed to, by making this model, make a couple of mistakes. Now, you'll see here, if I orbit around, some of these faces are grey. Now, that actually means they are internal faces on the outside. And that means that the geometry is going to be difficult for other applications to cope with. So I need to download and install a couple of extensions into SketchUp. Other things like Fusion 360, 123D are a little bit smarter and they have a lot of this stuff kind of built in already. But as SketchUp was actually really designed by Google as a tool to create the buildings in things like Google Earth, uh, it, we're kind of using it slightly for something it wasn't really designed for. Now to install extensions, they're dead easy. You go into Window, Extension Warehouse, and in the Extension Warehouse, you can search for what you're interested in. If I browse all of the extensions and search for something like STL, then here's a number of them that will allow us to export and import STL files. So you just click on that and install it, and it means then that you'll find in the file manager, I can export my model as an STL file, and that's something we'll need to do. The other thing that I recommend you download, which is very good, is something called Solid Inspector. Now, Solid Inspector is looking at this model, and it's spotting loads of things wrong with it. So we've got two stray edges, and we've got 43 <laughs> reverse faces. So I'm just going to click Fix All, and that looks an awful lot better. If I orbit around, we have no gray bits and all the lines are where they should be. So I'd recommend doing that before you go any further. Now we're going to export an STL file. Uh, we're going to leave the default units as the model units, which is millimeter. I'm going to say export and we'll pop that onto the desktop. So we have an STL file waiting. Now the STL file is just uh, all of this geometry described. So what we need to do is to open our slicer now. And here's the slicer that I'm going to use. This is Cura, which is my favorite. And here on the left hand side are all of the different settings for the printer that we're interested in. So already I've set up the size of the print bed and all those pieces in here. Now, the things like the temperature of the nozzle, the temperature of the print bed, how fast it prints, what kind of support you want is going to be individual to each piece that you do. But if I say file, load model file, I download that model file. There it is, and I can move around and have a look at it, and I can actually place it on the bed wherever I want it to print. Now, I'll actually just stick it on the back left-hand side. That looks good to me. Now, if I am going to go into layer mode, let me zoom in a little bit. Right, so go through all the different layers. I'd always recommend just going through this first to make sure it looks okay. And as we build up, that looks Fine, there's a little painless pill at the top. That was fantastic. 
So the next thing I need to do then is I need to take the SD card out of my 3D printer. I normally print from SD card. Uh, you can print directly from your PC from Cura, but I will always like it on SD card just because then I can turn my computer off and the printer can stand alone. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that toolpath to the SD card. Now I can remove the SD card from the computer and I can plug it into the side of the printer. And in this case, uh, I'm using the Fabricator 2 Mini from Hobby King. Uh, I love this little printer, it's great, it works really good. It's got PETG filament in it. And with this one, what you have to do is the default file that it prints is called auto00.g. So you just rename it on the card and you press this little button and it'll start printing. With more advanced printers with LCD display, you'll be able to navigate around the SD card and choose the G code file that you want and hit go. Once you hit go, then the printer starts printing. And then it's a waiting game, waiting for the part to finish. And after five or six minutes, it's only a very small part, here it is. So that wasn't too tricky, was it? So those are the steps. First of all, design your piece. Make sure that it is absolutely fine. Things like the tool I just showed you are actually really good to fix things that you've goofed up when you've built stuff, particularly in SketchUp. Things like Fusion 360, 123D are actually better at keeping track of the geometry, particularly complex geometry, so you don't tend to use things like that. Uh, export it as an SDL file. Import that SDL file into the slice of your choice. All the settings for the printers are usually given in the manual for the printers these days. So all you're really doing is just placing the part on the print bed I'd always recommend going to a layer view and just step through the layers just to make sure it doesn't do anything really wacky. Once you're happy with that, copy it onto the SD card, stick the SD card back in your printer and then select it and print. Not as tricky as it looks. So hopefully for those of you that are thinking about getting into 3D printing, we're starting to demystify some of this an awful lot. And for those of you that have been sitting on the fence, some of you might think, you know what? It actually isn't as tricky as it looks. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.